Thank you so much, Graham. Right now, let's continue with that Thursday morning of yours. And we're sitting down with a true South African legend next up, literary icon Zakes and Dark Cats with him. And we found out about how this country's history shaped his incredible life story. Now, Ndade Zeks Ndai is a South African literary genius and icon who's lived a life that in itself deserves to be a story chronicled for everyone to learn and know about. From exiled youth to literary prodigy to teacher, painter, author and filmmaker, Ndade Zeks unpacks with us the importance of cap capturing the living stories surrounding us today. And first, may I just say it is an absolute honour to have you here with us. Thank you for gracing us with oh, your presence. Oh, it is my great pleasure. Thank you, Tate Ziggs. Mm -hmm. So, if you were to take us back into your life, the fact that uh, mm -hmm. apartheid South Africa and the political climate of the time influenced a lot of your upbringing, the fact that yes. uh, your father was one of the founding members and uh, later on president of the ANC yes, Youth League. Youth League yeah. At 17, you were inducted into the PAC. When you look yeah. at that history, how do you think your political experiences have shaped the stories that you tell and how you tell them? Well, uh, you know, since I grew up in that kind of political environment, Politics, you know, uh, invariably comes into it. Mm -hmm. And when you read about your history, education plays a very prominent role from all of the accolades, the qualifications, mm -hmm. teachings and degrees. What do you think it is about education that is so important that has turned you into the powerhouse that you are today? My whole education actually started in the streets of Soweto. During holidays, we would go to the rural areas, you know, to the grandparents, mm -hmm and then to listen to the stories that my grandmother told, that my grandfather told. Mm -hmm. You see, all that count, counted you know, into the education that made me into being. But then, of course, formal education was also very crucial, mm -hmm. you see. There are many artists who were very good who didn't have any formal education in the arts. That is fine. Mm -hmm. But um, it also, I mean, does en enrich you and makes you even a much better artist than you would otherwise have been. A much more insightful one, mm -hmm. yes. I want to talk a little bit about your love for South Africa. You've traveled yes. all over the world due to your amazing work, but you always keep coming back home. What is it about this place that you find to be so Well, amazing? I mean, uh, this is a place that created me, you yeah. know. Uh, I wouldn't be here, I mean, without South Africa. I have projects that I do, for instance, with the rural women in the Eastern Cape. Uh -huh where we have a beekeeping project, and I come back for that. I'm also sometimes, you know, holding workshops for, for writers hmm. uh, at various places. So, you know, it is things <laughs> like that that bring me back here. Mm -hmm. I would have never pegged you as a beekeeper or somebody that loves bees, but this is... <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, yeah. No, in fact, beekeeping is something I discovered by accident. How so? When I went to the Eastern Cape, you know, uh, Heschel, which is where my grandfather used to live many years ago, uh -huh. and I discovered, you know, the beauty of the place. It was so beautiful. And the mountains were pink in color because it was spring and yeah. there are aloes there. But then there was also poverty. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I asked myself was, what can we do here to, to make the life better for the people? Yeah. The first thing was to look at that pink mountain. Flowers, bees. That's what first came to my mind. Mm -hmm. But then I knew nothing about beekeeping. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I went to beekeeping school to learn. And then after that, you know, organized a few women from the village uh -huh. and sent them to the same beekeeping school at Walkerville here uh -huh. uh, in, in Johannesburg. And then that's how we started then, wow. that, that beekeeping uh, a project. Absolutely fascinating stuff. Yeah. And it's, a, it's an amazing privilege to be able to learn uh -huh. more about your life. And I can't wait to continue our chat later. Right. And indeed, Ndade Ziggs has a lot of important knowledge and information to dispense. And of course, as we celebrate Youth Month, we turn to him to ask how the youth of South Africa today are faring. We'll have a chat to Ndade Ziggs a little bit later on. So make sure that you stay tuned.